It's possible to allocate memory in Rust that actually never gets cleaned up. This is known as a memory leak. So items that refer to each other create cycles. This means that neither of the items that refer to each other ever have a reference count of zero, which means they will never get dropped. Let's create some weak references to other items in this video. My name is Ricky and welcome to the dev method. If you like what you see, go ahead and give a thumbs up or subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. So before we get into weak and what it can be used for with reference counting in Rust, I want to go over just some, just something like a foundation to get us started. So here I have displayed for us uh, strong reference cycles. And notice that we have A and B listed. So A is an item and B is another item. A refers to B and B refers back to A. Now, I made the arrows that are pointing to the other boxes there uh, solid arrows because that is representing strong cycles. So if we have many items together, like in this illustration here, uh, something like A could point to B, which can point to D, which can point to E, then to F, then to C, and then all the way back to A. So we have a cycle in this case. And this is all a strong reference cycle. So in order to break these strong reference cycles, here we have a weak reference cycle. And so we have A again, which points to B, but then B points to A, and it's got the dotted line arrow because it's representing a weak reference. That means if A gets deallocated from memory, that's fine. B follows with it because nothing then is pointing to B. So back to the same illustration here, the only thing I've changed is that reference from B to D and B has that dotted line arrow, so we actually don't have a strong reference to anything. So the only thing here in this example that I've changed is now I've broken the strong reference cycle uh, where I have B pointing to D, but with a weak reference. So again, to illustrate here, you got the strong reference cycle, and then you got the weak reference cycle. So we're gonna keep this in mind as we go throughout the video. So let's first take a look at the cons list, just a little bit modified from the last video that I had. So here on line six, we have the list and we have a cons list. So we have two variations, we have the cons and then we have the nil. So cons is holding a number and then it points to another cons list or another list. It could either be nil, which is the end of that list or another cons, which is a number and then another list. Um, I've also have here an example of uh, a, a method, an associated function on list, which is tail. And all this is doing is just giving us all the rest of the stuff if it's a cons. Otherwise, it returns nothing, uh, and that's why it's an option. So remember, options can return us something or nothing. And in this case, if there's nothing else in the list, it returns nothing. Um, we're doing this, and we have this derived from debug because we're going to print this out later, and we're going to illustrate uh, a strong reference cycle. So let's take this next part step by step so that we get a hang of uh, what we're actually making. So the code itself might be confusing, so I have some illustrations to follow up with it. So the first thing in main, uh, line 21, we're creating A. So this is our, uh, our cons here that we're creating. And uh, we're giving it the value of 5, and then nothing else after that. So here's our illustration of what that looks like. Um, we have A, which points to 5, and then it has nothing else. So in that case, nil. No. Now on line 29, we make B, and B is actually also a cons, and we have 10 that it has, but then it points back to A. So notice here we're uh, adding a reference count of 1 when we add A to the list of the cons of B. So now we've gone from this where we just had A, and then we've created B, that also refers back to A, what A points to. So that's like this. So we have B that has a point, uh, a cons of 10 that now references the beginning of A, which is 5, but then A points to nothing else after that. So there we go. Now we have here on line 35, uh, we're going to get the tail of A. And uh, we're actually going to then add on to it, and we're going to mutate what the tail is, and we're going to give it then B. So this is what we have so far. Now if I go to the next thing, this is what we've created. So we had B that points to 10, and then points to 
5, which is also what A is pointing to. But now we've said that uh, we've mutated that tail of A so that it points back to B. And what does B have? It has 10, which then points to 5, which A also points to. And this is a cycle now. So we're actually going in a circle. So I have here in red where that cycle got created. So no good. And then we have some print lines here. So let's actually run this application and let's just see where we get. Okay, so um, from before, we had here uh, line 20 where we created A. And that initial reference count is then just one for A. But then uh, the next item, we print that out as well, which is nothing. So it was nothing, therefore it didn't print anything. Now on line 29, we had B, and that here, the initial reference count is just the one. And then we're going to do what the B's next item is, which we said was pointing to what A is also pointing to, uh, which is that five. So B has 10, and then it has five, and then it has nothing. That's kind of the idea. So then the reference count of B is two, or the, okay, so B, the reference count after changing A is two, and then a reference count after changing A is then two. So we can run this application and nothing breaks and nothing like errors out or anything, and that's okay. But now let's add a line where it, we actually have an issue. So now I'm uncommenting line 44, and here we're just printing out what A's tail is. So in that case, if we're printing out what the tail is, it's gonna go to 10, which is back to five, and it's gonna keep recursively trying to print out what the list actually holds and we have this reference cycle. So here we go, cargo run. So it prints out a whole bunch of things, and then eventually we have a fatal runtime error stack overflow. And what that essentially means is that we ran out of memory for what we're doing, and the application just quits, it aborts. So if you're using a ref cell that holds an RC, a reference count, you must ensure for yourself that the reference count actually doesn't exist. Rust cannot help you prevent this issue. So before we get into the solution, let's just look at a couple of things that are going to pop up in the code. So actually what we want to do is we want to take an RC and we want to change it into a week. So RC actually has this uh, function called downgrade. And what that does is that actually returns a week struct instead of an RC. So what that does is it turns it into a weak reference count instance instead of a RC, which is a strong reference count instance. To see the count of the weak references, we also have this function on RC called weak count. And so the difference here with the other RC is that the weak count doesn't need to be zero in order for the value or the, the data to be cleaned up. So therefore, if we're using weak reference instances, we actually have to check to see if the value is there before we can use it. And if it's not there, then it's just gone. And to do this, there's also an upgrade that we have. So upgrade returns an option of RC. And the result of this gives you the two things. Uh, you have something or you have nothing. So if you have nothing, that means the value's gone, it's been dropped. But if you have something, that means the value's still there and valid and you can access it. So essentially the, uh, the upgrade function is trying to help ensure that you're not accessing an invalid pointer. So to illustrate this point to us, let's actually take a look at a tree structure, and then we're going to add some weak references to it. So I also realized that some people don't know what tree structures are, so let's just take a moment and review. So here's an example of like one kind of tree you might see, and it made it actually kind of look like a triangle, like a tall tree, just to illustrate the point even further. Uh, but essentially you have something that starts at the top, and that's actually known as the root, and then it can have children or uh, other things that it points to. And each one of these white dots, you want to think of these as a node. And then the uh, arrows that point away from them, uh, you can think of them as like edges. Sometimes people call them branches. So here's something annotated with some text. I know the text is kind of small, but the illustration is also pretty big. So at the top, you have what is just the node, and that's known as the root. Some people call it the source. It's kind of up to you how you want to call it. Um, and then I labeled all the arrows as edges. Um, I know that in this illustration, we have a node that points to um, either one or two edges, uh, but you could actually, in theory, have them point to an infinite number of edges. So also notice at the bottom we have leaf nodes. Now I added one more in the middle here because I totally forgot it was there, 
But that leaf node that's here in the middle um, is the same as all the other leaf nodes. Basically, they don't have anything else that they point to. So if we were trying to traverse this tree or this graph, um, we get to a leaf node. There's nothing else we can go to, so we know that that's the end. So here's an example of that uh, tree, but with some numbers. And uh, we first start with 5, and then we have 5 points to 13, and then points to 14, then points to 10 but also points to four. So there's just an example. This is what we're actually going to create first. So on line 10, uh, we have here the node, and we got the value, which we're just sticking to I32 just for uh, our demonstration purpose. Then we have children. So those are the one-to-many edges or arrows pointing away from the node. Now down below in our main function, we have line 16 that defines a leaf. So that's the thing that's going to be at the end. And then uh, we have the branch. You could think of this as maybe the root or um, just a, a node itself, just any node. And uh, we're actually saying that its value is 5, just like our, just like our illustration, 5 there at the top. But then we're going to add 3 to it by giving it a clone uh, inside the ref cell. So again, this is a vector, right? So we can have one to many things in here. Right now, we're just pointing to one thing, which is very simple. And just to show you that everything's OK with this, uh, we're going to run it. So cargo run. Cool. Everything worked out as, as before. There are going to be some warnings here, but nothing to be concerned about. It's just saying we never referred to value or children. So now I've added line 26 here. Uh, we're just going to print out what it looks like. So cargo run. All right, so it starts with uh, the branch, which is 5. And then it has a children. And here's where that array starts here, or that vector, I should say. And uh, it has the value 3, but then it points to a vector of nothing as well. And then the vector gets closed. So there we go. So we've essentially made a tree structure um, that looks something like this, or could look something like this. And something to note is that all those arrows, they're solid lines. So they're all strong references. Uh, there is no cycle here, so everything is safe in that regard. Things will be cleaned up. So um, as soon as five drops, all these other things drop as well. So now we're going to make the children aware of their parent. So we want to go from something like this to something like this here. So notice we have pointing back up to the parent. And that is our weak reference that we want to create. But if it was a strong reference, we'd have a lot of reference cycles here. And that would be not good for what it is we want to accomplish. So it's going to be a lot of code here, but I want to show you where we upgrade it first. So now we have our node here, uh, which is on line 9. And the thing that we want to do is we want to give it a parent. Okay, So then that parent is going to be a weak. Notice weak actually comes from uh, RC module from the standard library. That's weak. And then opposed to RC, uh, the capital RC, which is the strong reference. So that's, uh, that's how we define the node. Now, at, similarly as before, line 16, uh, we have a leaf. And it's a 3. It has no parent. And it has no children. That's it. Now, notice here on line 22, we're going to print it out. Um, first, we borrow it, right? So let's, let's just take a look at this just for a moment. And let's just say it equals x. So what does this actually end up being? This is a ref to a weak node. And then what we want to do to like access any of its information, because if we were just to print this out, in the console, we're actually just going to see it have like parentheses weak. So we have to do the upgrade, right? So that way we can pass ownership into the print line, have it print out. So we have here now the actual option RC node, just like what we wanted before. So I'll remove that line, but that's the illustrative purpose there. Then we have branch, uh, which is 5. And it starts out by not pointing to anything, because this is going to be like our root. But we do have it, uh, then its child is going to be the leaf. But that's not the end of it. We actually now need to say what the leaf's parent is. So that's this here. So we borrow mutably, and then we use uh, this downgrade on the branch here from line 24. See that? And that's giving us our weak pointer uh, for the parent in the leaf. So it's a little confusing to look at at first. Let's do the illustration. So let's just look at this leaf here. 
Um, here's the item in the circle, three, and it has no children, so it's just pointing to nothing. And then it has no parent right now, so it points to nothing. So basically what we've done is we've done these lines 16 through 20. That's all we've done so far. Then on line 24 through 28, this is what we're actually doing here. We're creating five that points to three. Okay, so the five is like our branch variable, and it points to three. Three still has no children, and its parent right now doesn't point to anything because that doesn't happen until line 30. So that line there is taking this parent that is nothing and just moving it over and pointing it right to the five. And then that, that is our, our weak reference there because it's got the dotted arrow. And then we just want to print out what this is. So we use uh, the borrow and upgrade. That way we can see a nice printing representation of what it is in the console. So let's do that now and let's read the output. Cargo run. All right. So it first starts off with just the leaf. That's showing that here. And it's got nothing. That's just how it starts. Then we created the branch and then added the leaf to that branch and then changed the leaf's parent to be that branch. And we made a print on that as well. So that's what is represented here. So there's that five, which is that branch. It has a parent of nothing. I know it says weak right here, but there's not, there's definitely nothing there, trust me. Uh, and then we have the children, okay? And that child was the leaf, which is three. And then it has a parent, which actually points back to itself, or, or back to the branch. And right now it doesn't show up here, but definitely, trust me, there is something there. And then again, we have no children for the leaf. Now let's modify our example a little bit so that we can see uh, the reference counts go up and down. So the node implementation in this example hasn't changed. It's the same as it was before. We have our leaf. So line 16, got the leaf again. Then we're going to print out what it is. Okay. Now we create a new scope starting on line 28. Notice the uh, that purple or magenta line going all the way down to line 49 there. So that's where this next variable branch will be dropped. So we create that branch variable. Uh, we give it the leaf. We make sure the leaf's parent gets the correct parent. So that's what this line does here with the downgrade so that we get a weak pointer to it. Uh, we'll print out what that is, and then we'll print out what the, the uh, leaf strong and weak counts are. Then we're going to drop the branch, and then we're going to count them again. So let's run this example, and let's walk through the output. All right, so again, on line 16, that's where we have the leaf. And um, its initial count is going to be one strong count of one, because leaf points to what is in there. And uh, weak count is nothing. So we get that strong count with RC colon colon strong count. And then we get the weak count with RC colon colon weak underscore count. So that's that first one there. Now we create that new scope, and we have the branch. And then we put everything together the right way and we go to print it out on line 37, um, the branch. So we have one strong count and then one weak count because that leaf is the weak count pointing to the branch. And then the leaf here actually has now two strong counts, once for the leaf variable that was back on line 16, and then because the branch has this as its child as well, that's that second count. Now we exit the scope, so branch is gonna get dropped. All right, so we drop the branch. Now, what is our parent? Or I'm sorry, what is our leaf's parent? Uh, it is nothing because branch got dropped when it exited that scope there. And then what is the leaf's strong and weak count? Well, it went back down to one because there is no branch anymore. So all these strong and weak reference counts are actually kept track by RC and weak, and it has to do with their implementation of the drop trait. So here's our examples of a strong count and a weak count. I hope you guys learned something. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I will do my best to answer your questions. Um, if you like what you saw, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more and maybe send it to a friend if you like this video and you think they could use it. Other than that, see you later.